So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you the over-the-top chili method and how easy it is to make some absolutely delicious chili using this method. So it is late fall and that means it is chili season. Now chili is one of my favorite recipes to make and the way I always do it is I use my leftover brisket because I usually have so much in the freezer. Making chili with leftover brisket has to be one of the easiest and best ways to make chili. If you're interested in seeing my recipe, go ahead, leave a comment down below. Let me know you wanna see that video and I will get it made for you. Now, if you have been perusing the internet at all lately, you've probably seen this over the top chili method shown all over the place. And it was pretty intriguing for me. I usually don't like making chili with ground meat, but I wanna give it a go, and that's what I'm gonna be doing today. So for this recipe, I'm gonna be using my Z Grills pellet smoker. I think a pellet grill is a great option for this chili because I'm going to be adjusting temperatures pretty quickly on the fly, and with a pellet grill, it makes that super simple. And I'm not looking for a ton of smoke flavor just because it's a little bit of ground meat. You just want some smoke flavor. It's gonna get a bunch of good smoke flavor because it is ground meat. So if you haven't seen the over the top chili, basically what it is is you get your pot on the smoker, then you put a grate over it with your ground meat in a ball above it. So as you smoke that ground meat, all the drippings go right down into your chili, making a delicious, flavored chili. So enough talking about it, let's jump right into this recipe. All right, so you're gonna need a nice Dutch oven to do this recipe most likely. Sure, you could do it other ways, but a Dutch oven's going to work the best. If you have a regular Dutch oven, that's great. If you have one of these enamel coated cast iron Dutch ovens, you're gonna wanna take a little extra work because when you use these in the smoker, sometimes you can get some staining on the outside and it is real pain to clean. Now, if you wanna stay out of the doghouse with your wife and make sure that you can clean this up easily when you're done, I'm gonna show you a great way to make it easy to clean when you're finished. So I just have a rag here. I'm gonna put a little bit of avocado oil on it. Now, you're just gonna want a high heat oil. Avocado oil won't smoke off until 500 degrees, so that is why it is a good option for this, because we are not gonna see 500 degrees on this thing. Then, just take this on the rag and wipe a good coating of oil all over this thing. That way the smoke is going to stick to the oil, making this easier to clean in the end. If you don't have avocado oil, I think a canola oil might work well. Just check what the smoke point is of the oil you're using. I know an olive oil would not work too well for this, and that should be good like that. Now for this chili, I'm gonna be using my method for making chili, so you can take whatever you want and put it in there. Different kind of vegetables, it's up to you. I'm just gonna show you what I like to use in my chili. So I'm gonna start off with some carrots. This is a more non-traditional item for chili. So I'm just going to dice these into some decent sized chunks. And I like using the carrots because it makes it a very hearty kind of chili. Almost like a stew. And we'll take these and just throw them in our pot. All right, so next I have a green bell pepper. And then just cut this into some decent sized chunks. Next I got a red bell pepper. And again, you can use basically any kind of peppers you want. Yellow, orange, green, red, doesn't really matter. I like the flavor of the red and the green. All right, next, some jalapeno peppers. You don't have to go with jalapenos if you don't like the spiciness. Now, if you don't want these too spicy, just cut them in half like this and then just get that membrane out of here. If you take the membrane and the seeds out, it will be less spicy. I don't really find jalapenos to be too spicy anyway. If you want it more spicy, you can go ahead and pick yourself up a more spicy pepper. Or you can get the spiciness from adding some seasoning later. And gloves are a great idea when dealing with jalapenos. Because if you've ever been dealing with jalapenos and you don't wash your hands properly, 
you go ahead and touch your face later, you will definitely know that you were touching jalapenos. So now with the jalapenos, I like to dice these up a little bit smaller than the other peppers. All right, so we're almost done. All I have left here is an onion, one whole onion. You can use whatever kind of onion you want. If you want the red onion, go for it. Just have a regular yellow onion here. And then just like with the jalapeno, I like to dice the onion up a little more fine. Just like that. Go ahead and add this to our bowl. All right, and there we have it. A mixture of all the good vegetables we got cut up in there. Now what I like to do, go in with just a splash of that avocado oil, a little bit of salt, some crushed black pepper, and then just mix that up. And then now I wanna get this right onto the pellet smoker. All right, so I've got my pellet smoker at 250 degrees right now, and I wanna get those vegetables on there immediately to start to let them cook. I know we're not gonna be able to cook them as well as if it was on a stove top, but I still wanna to start to let them cook a little bit. Now, if you've seen any of the over-the-top chili recipes, you know that they add all their liquids and everything, then they put it on, put the meat over top, and let it cook this way. Now, I'm not gonna be adding the wet ingredients until later on because I really wanna try and let these vegetables cook down a little bit. Now, the other reason is once we get the meat on the rack above those vegetables, all the fat's gonna drip down and it's gonna act like a cooking oil and it's gonna kind of cook off a little bit and soak into the vegetables. If you put all your wet ingredients in there and you have all the liquid in the pot, when the fat drips down into your chili, it's basically just going to mix in with that liquid and you're gonna get a fatty layer of grease on top of your chili at the end. So we're gonna to try to avoid that and we're gonna let the vegetables cook by themselves with no liquid for about an hour and a half. But let's go ahead and get our meat mixture ready so we can throw it on top of that chili. All right, so with the meat, you can get pretty creative with this. Here, I just have some ground beef. This came from some brisket that I trimmed up in one of my videos. And this is exactly why I like to trim down my brisket so much. I would much rather have this fresh ground beef for this delicious chili than I would a bunch of dried up pieces of smoked brisket. So I'm not sure exactly how much this is. It's probably close to a couple pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these opened up. When I grind up my beef, it's usually a coarse grind. I do it twice. Now I also went ahead and picked up some ground chorizo. I think this is going to go super well in this chili and I love chorizo now I'm gonna throw a little bit of salt on here I'm not gonna hit the chorizo with salt because it's probably salty enough and I'm gonna add in a little black pepper now you can go on with a barbecue seasoning or really whatever you like but I'm gonna add a lot of flavor to this chili afterwards so I'm not too concerned about getting any extra seasoning on it at the moment. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and mix all this up into one big ball if I can. You can see the chorizo is pretty crumbly, but once it's mixed up with this ground beef, I don't think we'll have an issue with it. Now, like I said, you can get creative with this. You can use just pork. You could use just ground pork with the ground beef. You could probably go with ground turkey, but cooking times will change. And the whole point of this is to get fat dripping down in your chili and you're not really gonna get that with ground turkey. You could use beef with a breakfast sausage. That would probably be a great option. Now it is looking pretty good. So I just wanna get it kinda shaped into a ball here. Really pack it together tight. Now get a wire grate. Get this hunk of meat on here like that. So the vegetables have probably been going for about 10 minutes, not really much to do anything, but let's go ahead, get this on top of that vegetable mixture. So we're still at 250 on here. See those vegetables cooking away. Now let's go ahead, just put that right over the pot 
So now you can see all that fat's just gonna drip right down into there. Let's cover this up and let it smoke. All right, so I'm gonna let this go for probably an hour and a half. I'm going to check it around the 40 minute mark just for the vegetables and give them a little stir. But I really wanna let those vegetables cook down a little bit before I go ahead and add some liquid. So after an hour and a half, we'll come back out, see what our meat temperature is at, then we'll go ahead and add the rest of the ingredients. So I will see you then. All right, so this chili has been on for two hours now. After about an hour, I bumped the temp up to 275. So let's go ahead and get a temperature check on the meat here. So we're at 138 degrees. So it is getting there. Let's get this off for a second though. So we can look at these veggies. And there you go. You can see they've cooked down pretty nicely. I gave them a mix after the one hour mark. Just check that out. Well, you can see all the fat down there in the bottom. There's also some moisture from all these vegetables. So we'll give that another mix. But this looks really nice. I like how all these veggies have cooked down. So I'm gonna go ahead and add our liquids in and some more of our seasoning. Just stick with me because there is a few ingredients here. First is a can of diced tomatoes, can of tomato paste. If you don't have tomato paste, it'll be fine. You can add a little ketchup. Most times I usually don't have tomato paste anyway, so I don't have it in there. Now I would like to add a few splashes of apple cider vinegar, a little bit of hot sauce, use whatever you want. Then some beef stock. This is unsalted beef stock. We don't need any extra salt in there. All right, next, a little bit of beer. And I'm going with some bush light today. Can't beat a good old bush light. Now I'm gonna give this a mix. I just like to see where we are with our liquids. That's not looking too bad. I'll finish off that beer in there. And I want to add a little bit more of that beef stock. And another splash of the apple cider vinegar. And that looks like a good amount of liquid. Let's go ahead and start adding some seasonings to this. Start off with some black pepper. Most important ingredient, chili powder. And a good amount of that. A little bit of cumin. Garlic powder. And then a little bit of a different ingredient. This is baking cocoa, unsweetened cocoa powder. This is a awesome thing to add to your chili. Gives it a very earthy taste and it gives it a fantastically dark color. And I forgot to add this earlier, a little bit of honey. And this is Mike's Hot Honey. This stuff is great. All right, now we'll just get that mixed up. And I didn't add any salt. If it needs salt, I'm going to add it at the end. So I know that meat is plenty salty, but this is already looking really nice here. See that nice color we got. Now, the last thing I wanna add, like I said, when I make a chili, I want a hearty chili. So here I have some red kidney beans and black beans. This is really going to make this a super hearty chili. Let's go ahead and mix this up. That looks fantastic. So all we are missing now for that is our meat. So let's get that meat back on there. Slide that over. And now I'm gonna let this go probably for another 45 minutes to an hour and then we'll get that meat in there. All right, so it's been another 45 minutes about. This meat is looking good. Let's give it a temp check. About 150 degrees, so that is perfect. You want to bring it up to 160, but it will come up to temp once we get it into that chili. So let's slide that to the side, pull that grate off, and take a look at that chili. That is looking nice right there. Just check that out. You can see all the fat that's on top. That's what I was talking about. That's why I liked letting it cook with just the vegetables in the beginning. But that is a nice looking chili right there. So let's go ahead and get this meat into it. So we're just gonna grab this big meatball and just start breaking it up in there. 
I don't know if you can see, there's a nice little smoke ring we got on there. That's what this over the top chili is good for. It's gonna give this ground meat some extra flavor. Plus you get a nice crust. There we go. Now let's get this mixed up in here. Break that meat up a little more. And like I said, I like a hearty chili. And this is exactly what that is going to be. It smells amazing. You can see how thick it is. Not too much liquid. I don't like mine to be too liquidy. All right, this looks fantastic. Now, if you want more liquid in there, you go ahead and add a little more beer or some more of the beef broth. Both those options will be great. But for me, this is fine. And a little bit more of that fat's gonna render out, so I think we will be good. I'm gonna get this back in the center and I wanna turn this smoker to 325 degrees now. And I'm gonna let this go probably for another hour and we'll check it. You can let this simmer as long as you want at this point. It's not gonna do anything wrong by letting it go longer. So I will see you guys back here in about one hour. All right, the chili's been on for another hour. Let's take a look. You can see plenty of liquid in there now. Just gonna mix this up. Ooh, and that looks fantastic. It smells even better. Now, like I said, you can keep letting this simmer as long as you'd like, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off because I wanna give it a try. So I'm gonna pull this off, get a little bowl, let it cool off, and I will see you to give this a try. Mm. Man, oh man. I usually love my leftover brisket chili, so I don't really try any other styles of chili, but this is so good. It has such a delicious richness to it, probably because all that fat was dripping down in there. Man, this is some delicious chili. Mm. Flavors are on point. It's got just a little bit of heat on the back end there, and I really like adding the carrots in here because it gives it a nice crunch that you usually don't get in a chili. Mm. Now this would be good on a chili cheese dog. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a like. That Z Grills pellet smoker worked flawlessly once again. That is one of the best pellet smokers you can get. If you wanna see my full review video of that, you can check it out right over here. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe right over here. I'll leave a link to everything I like to use in my videos down below in the description. Be sure to check it out. But most importantly, get out there and smoke something good. Mmm.